In Matthew chapter 9, Jesus approached um, a guy that people didn't look too well upon, and I can't imagine why. Uh, He went to a guy named Matthew, the tax collector, to call him as one of his beloved disciples. And when he was there, he decided to hang around and went into the house and recline at the table, it says, and he hung out there with the tax collectors and the sinners. And as you might recall, the Pharisees came, and what did they say to him? Well, they called him out and said, why is this so-called righteous man sitting here with these sinners? And what did Jesus say? He said in verse 12 of chapter 9, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. This title of Jesus as a physician is one of my favorites in Scripture. There are many um, metaphors and titles Jesus has given. You may think of him as a sower of seeds. You may see him as the cornerstone. Um, He's the lamb. But then there's this reference to Jesus as the physician. And we've kind of run with it, and you just assume it's peppered throughout Scripture that Jesus is the physician, and it's really not. It's referenced here and then repeated in the Gospels. And, of course, we see examples of Jesus healing, which is why we call him the great physician. It's one of my favorites because it demonstrates Jesus, first, his compassion for people and his power to heal. Who here is sick? Who here knows somebody who is sick? Every week we gather together and we pray for a long list of people who are in need of prayers to heal their physical ailments. Pam Ryan is a name that comes first to my mind. I think of when Mike said that they had fortunately found one of the the best liver doctors in uh, the world or country. What is it that Mike and Pam are looking for when they go to find a doctor? What is it they're hoping they're going to get? What are all of us hoping to get when we go to the doctor? To get well, Harrison says, that's right. We hope that when we find that doctor, that we find someone who is truly compassionate about their patients. That when you're in their office, you're number one. That they care about you. That they want to see you get better. But even that isn't everything. We want to find a doctor who has the power to heal you. When Mike found that doctor, he is trusting that that person can go in the other room, look at the charts, read the data, and figure out a plan to heal Pam. Compassionate person with the power to heal. And of course, Jesus demonstrated that he had the power to heal all throughout his time on this earth. He healed the blind, he healed the deaf, he healed the mute, he healed the lame, he cleansed leopards, he freed demon-possessed, and he raised the dead. And why did he do it? Well, Jesus was truly compassionate about the people on earth. He truly loved them, he truly loves us. It's something that All of us in this room can aspire to, and we can seek out. In a sense, right now, I'm talking to a room full of physicians, those who can emulate the compassion of Christ to heal others with the gospel he has given us. Who here is spiritually sick? Because, of course, everyone here in this room knows that when Jesus healed the blind and he healed the deaf and he healed the mute, what he was really seeking out to do was to heal people's souls. Who here is spiritually sick? Who here has been spiritually sick? It's interesting. We may comment to our friends and family um, and say things like, I'm on a, at a spiritual low. I feel spiritually weak. Maybe you don't say that. Maybe you just say, I'm down right now. I'm in a rut. Maybe it would be better if we started describing our ailments with the metaphors given to us in the New Testament. Maybe you say, I'm having a hard time seeing right now. I'm losing my vision of things that matter. 
I'm having a hard time hearing the truth. Everything around me going on in the world is clouding out what's truth and what's not. I'm having a hard time hearing. And of course we know if you are spiritually sick, Jesus heals the blind. In John chapter 8, verse 12, it reads, if you want to turn there. Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. If you're having trouble seeing, if you're losing hope or losing your way, Jesus is the answer. He's the physician who can heal you. And of course, when we seek out Jesus, we're not just seeking him out his name. It's really difficult to explain to people when you say, I'm a follower of Jesus. Of course, you have to know who Jesus is. You have to know he is love, he is joy, he is kindness, he is gentleness, he is all of these things. And you have to seek those things out to gain your sight. That's how the path is illuminated. If you're having trouble hearing, you know that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God in Romans 10, 17. There's a lot of noise in today's world. The Bible and his word and the Holy Spirit cures that. Jesus, our physician, cures that. Jesus, of course, cleanses us as well. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. Verse 7, sorry. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. And of course also, if you are here tonight and you have not obeyed the gospel, then this is for you that Jesus also raises the dead. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 4. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ has raised from the de dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. Jesus is our great physician. But to access him, we need to seek him out. We need to go to him. Matthew chapter eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Next verse says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. We have to do what he prescribes. We have to take the antidote. Humble, uh, come to me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and, I will find re and you will find rest for your souls. Also in Mark 16, verse 16, He who has believed and is baptized will be saved. He who disbelieves will be condemned. Anytime I give a talk like this, my ultimate prayer is that something said will prick somebody's heart or leave you with something. Honestly, I'm a little discombobulated today because I've spent a lot of this week talking and talking and talking in meetings, and I'm kind of done talking, so it's kind of funny to have the invitation. But I hope something was said tonight that pricked your heart. If you're sick and needing prayers, please come forward and we'll pray for you. As always, come together as we stand and sing.